welcome to 10th lecture of video course on travelogy. The title of this lecture is Wear Analysis. In previous four lectures, we have discussed various mechanisms related to wear. Now, today's lecture is related to how to analyze some value related to wear. Can we go ahead systematically point by point? Can we pinpoint what kind of wear mechanism is taking place and how we can get remedy of that? How can we reduce that kind of wear mechanism? In true sense, there will never be a single wear mechanism which will cause a failure. It will be generally related one wear mechanism will promote another wear mechanism. So, generally they are integrated one way or another way. Thinking only one wear mechanism may not give a 100 percent solution. In addition to that, we need to know that there are too many system parameters which affect the wear mechanism. So, we need to think out of box whenever we attack this kind of problem. We need to find alternative solution from the load point of view, from system point of view, from materials point of view, from lubrication point of view. Quite possible one solution may be better solution compared to other solution. Always every solution will provide some results, some results uh, compared to results, but we should choose the best solution. So, first question comes in my mind, can one estimate the wear rate? I believe yes. We have drive the equation for adhesive wear, we have drive the equation for abrasive wear, we have drive the equation for erosive wear and fatigue wear also. Using those equation one can estimate wear rate. So, question answer is yes, we can estimate the wear rate, but Professor Ludema, Michigan University, he disagrees with that. He says that or I am quoting his sentence, the overall it is probably accurate to say that there is a little incentive for a designer to use any of their equations available in the literature. What are the reason for that? He provides the reasons also. He says a scan of many wear models shows considerable ingratitude or uh, inconsistency. There is a some variation from one equation to other equation and uh, people are not coming or converging to one equation except the Archer's model. What are the reason is the equation have equations have either too many undefined variables or too few variables or too many lesser, uh, lesser number of variables to adequately describe the system. Both the complexity either the system is not being identified properly or there are too many variables which cannot be determined by few experiments. You have to do a number of experiments to come to the results. So, using directly equations or using a wear equation directly may not give complete solutions. We need to think from other angle. In addition, uh, above all that this uh, what a sentence comes is a uh, most of the available equations a uh, drive made for mild wear rate of the components. What is the meaning of that? At wear rate, if it is under mild kind of domain, mild regime, then only can be predicted. In severe wear case, it cannot be predicted or we can say if we are rejecting some component, it is because of severe wear because of the high wear rate, that is why we are rejecting. Mild wear we will not be rejecting so fast or uh, rejecting uh, severe wear will not be uh, uh, easy for us. If it is a severe wear, then we are rejecting, but we will not be able to diagnose what is the wear mechanism. Severe wear may come with a number of combination of wear mechanisms. So, finding a root cause failure will be always a difficult situation by using a one single equation. Instead of that, we should always go ahead with uh, uh, root level or we start always with a scratch level try to diagnose what are the forces, how the forces are getting uh, uh, transferred from one surface to other surface are they really intentionally they have been transferred or because of the some system problem they are getting transferred. 
So, a number of situations are possible. So, it will be always advisable to go ahead by step by step sequentially and try to analyze. If we directly jump see the where and find out okay, we try to find out okay, what will be where mechanism that may not be good results. Uh, finally, from uh, this slides comes to so the conclusion from this slide says that to estimate where theoretical equations as well as experimental coefficients are required. That means, we cannot get 100 percent results just by physical relations. We need to have experimental coefficients or experiments performed on the system to get the results. We can do comparison. If you want to compare two materials, four materials are compared to two system designs, then where equations or theoretical equation may give good results, but we want to find out absolute sense the life then we need to find uh, need to use experimental coefficient too. Let us take one example. This slide shows a cam which has a some sort of pits on the surface. This cam was rejected because it was making some noise and it was uh, not performing its uh, intended function. And this this uh, this portion shows clearly what are the number of pits and uh, if I take uh, some reference axis uh, 0 degree here and rotate by 190 uh, rotate it by 270 degree. So, this kind of wear occurs roughly 270 degree 270 plus or minus some degree. If I take uh, reference axis over here then this will turn out to be around 90 degree that is why uh, this uh, heading comes this wear has occurred at the 91 degrees that means, there was a reference axis over here and 91 degrees over here. If I am assuming the rotational uh, rotational motion is clockwise, can we do systematic approach or can we follow systematic approach to estimate this kind of pitting life of cam follower. Even though in my previous slide I mentioned that wear will not occur alone, it will be a combination of wear mechanism which will work together. However, this was uh, uh, precision related operation. So, wanted to be uh, this portion was uh, uh, this cam was rejected much earlier stage just uh, with, uh, within a one year it was uh, replaced with a new cam. They wanted accuracy and um, interesting point is that this cam where uh, this cam was used for filling the toothpaste in tube. So, uh, reduction in uh, quantity or more quantity was a, a bad quality and uh, they wanted to maintain the quality of toothpaste in tube uh, proper quantity that is why they rejected the earlier stage. So, that there should not be much problem and we can say we can start with the pitting wear even though I mentioned that uh, always a combination will work, but here the pitting wear is uh, happening. So, I am going to analyze it uh, along as a pitting wear but it can be combined with a some sort of corrosion because a pitting is always aggregated if there is a moisture if there is a um, corrosive environment. So, I showed only the cam, but it is also related to the follower the cam follower they are generally used as a one unit. In addition to that um, question comes can we operate this mechanism at the higher speed because if I go ahead with the stripe back curve. I know that if I speed speed of operation is increased, then wear coefficient will decrease and um, friction coefficient will decrease. Our friction coefficient will decrease, that's why the wear will decrease. So, question comes: Can we really operate at slightly higher speed compared to what we are operating? If I assume the scam was operated at 60 rpm, can I think about uh, operating 65 rpm? What will be benefit of that is uh, more fa faster. Uh, filling out the toothpaste will happen because of high RPM and if we are able to gain 4 percent 5 percent uh, production that will help us or uh, that will uh, overall give the good returns. So, first is that how to analyze the speeding value second can we think about increasing the speed without much problem or if a speed is going to reduce the wear increase the life we should opt for that. So, first question how does pitting failure occurs or how does pitting failure occur? I am showing a two blocks one is yellow color block other one is a blue color block and here the double headed arrow is shown that shows that 
stresses or load will be reversible in nature. It will be applied and relieved, applied and relieved. Now, blue color block says some sort of the stress profile and this stress is shown only a shear stress. We are not showing a compressive stress. There is a reason uh, for that. We know pitting occurs generally because of uh, shear stresses. It is not because of compressive stresses or in other words, we can say one direction is a compressive stress, but that is inducing the shear stress in lateral direction that causes a fracture that causes a failure. An interesting thing is that shear will be lesser at the surface and shear stress will be higher at the subsurface. That is why many times if there is no surface crack available, fatigue will start from the subsurface and if there is a one crack subsequently other crack and they merge together they become bigger in size, instable and the fracture will occur. So, we just keeping this thing in mind we are starting. Now, it has been uh, mentioned that uh, this kind of pitting failure is uh, happening because of the reversible loading, because of the dynamic loading, because of the change in the magnitude of the load. Now, can we really reduce this magnitude first thing and from second thing is that from where the this load is coming. If I apply a constant load, then can we really remove or uh, avoid this kind of failure? We can, can we say that this kind of failure will not occur? So, first we did the uh, estimation of the force which is getting transferred uh, from cam to follower and uh, cam is uh, uh, also experiencing a, experiencing a reaction force. So, this force is changing with a degree uh, with a rotational angle as the cam rotates it experiences a different kind of forces. You can see here the force is roughly 1200 Newton steady for some time and then goes down then goes up. And then maybe the maximum value in this cycle is a 90 degree. At the 90 degree the load is high. Again it remains uh, to a stationary position from one, uh, roughly 122 degree to 240 degree or 243 degree. It remains stationary it does not uh, change it is a static. After that again the shoots up, it goes on higher value, crosses compared to this uh, magnitude and the maximum value occurs around 270 degree and then again goes back uh, to the lower value dips and again rises. And here what we are referring from the top axis, if I go back this is a what I am saying that this is the axis I am assuming 0 degree a rotation and this is 270 degree exactly. So, whatever we are thinking that pitting wear has occurred at the 270 degree, the same thing is been uh, shown over here the maximum force is around 270 degree, but I cannot conclude just by finding the force how much force is uh, generated at the interface. We need to do more analysis one point one positive point is that we found the failure at around 20 270 degree and we found the failure because of the high load that is the one possibility that high load is there. Now, question comes that can we really reduce this load or can we reduce the dynamic uh, variation in the load can we bring to the steady state condition. So, this is what uh, uh, slide says can dynamic load be reduced interesting thing yes it can be. Now, if I find the pressure angle variation with the cam angle with the rotation of the cam how pressure angle is varying. It says that pressure angle is a 0 it reaches to 42 degree in um, negative direction then it remains stationary from around 120 degree to 240 degree then it goes up and maximum pressure angle is 45 degree. If I reduce this pressure angle dynamic load will reduce you can uh, see the comparison wherever the pressure angle is maximum load is maximum. Here the uh, again the load is maximum or here sorry pressure angle is maximum here the load is also maximum or here. And this load is a vector combination as a vector sum of the two components that is why the negative sign is getting mixed it is not a we are not showing any negative sign it is a vector sum and that will remain positive it is a magnitude it is not a not a with the direction. So, if I if we can reduce or we can redesign the system with a laser pressure angle this load will decrease and overall life of the cam will increase. 
to give a complete definition to the pressure angle, we can say the pressure angle is the angle between direction of motion and axis of transmission or uh, axis of the load transmission along which the load is getting passed. Okay. And this gives a couple of uh, good um, indications to us. First thing is that if the pressure angle is 0, it is not changing, what we can say transmitted force is completely utilized to move the follower. So, it is fulfilling the complete intended purpose. We are applying force to move the object, to move the follower and it is moving in the same direction. It is not changing its direction and 100 percent force is getting transmitted why it is fulfilling its intended function. However, if the phi is equal to 90 degree, you are applying a force object is not moving at all. That means, 100 percent force is uh, misused or uh, we say that it is not utilized at all. It is inducing the stresses, but uh, it is not uh, giving any other useful function to us. So, we should avoid phi 90 degree, we should always encourage phi 0. But we know the path motion and uh, because of the variation in a motion, there will be always some pressure angle. If we go for the better design, larger radius, this pressure angle can be reduced, but it will space, uh, occupy more space and uh, space uh, constraint will always be there. It is uh, going to increase the uh, size of the machine, so we will always look for the lower uh, size machine. So, there will be always a trade off. We cannot say that um, pressure angle 0 is possible, it is possible, but because of some other constraints, we will not be going uh, pressure angle 0 always. Maybe the few degrees, uh, some chunk, yes, that is also shown here, here from 120 degree to 240 degree. Pressure angle is almost 0 and the force is steering. Another word, this much force is sufficient to give our purpose. Uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, CD component is sufficient to fulfill the function, but additional force is coming because of the pressure angle because of the force in other direction is getting diverted and then why we need to increase the pressure. More load is required almost a two time load is required compared to this. So, we can go for the better design, you can reduce the pressure angle, we can reduce the dynamic load can we bring the we can bring to the steady value. The first constraint comes that we cannot bring phi is equal to 0 always because of the path motion. There will be some finite value greater than 0 for uh, some angle maybe say the 60 degree 70 degree that will increase the uh, load. But in addition to that if I pressurize too much now the I want all the pressure angle 0 and we want uh, force to be transmitted. So, that load dynamic load is not there and there should not be any failure of cam, it should uh, sustain infinite life. That can also be done, um, um, we can argue on that, we can go for a better design, we can go for complete dynamic design, the multi body dynamics can be used, but question comes will that be a 100 percent solution to us. So, in this slide poses a question, can dynamic load be eliminated? To answer this question, it is always preferable to see how cam follower mechanism is really functioning, what is interaction between cam and follower. So, this is a grooved shape cam and follower which is not visible to us is uh, somewhere here, is somewhere here, is moving in group. And there is a there is a link, there is a follower is here sorry, follower is going moving in this direction, this is a another link for support. The follower moves in this path and some clearance is uh, provided for free motion. So, that is why I say that this is a radial cam and it is strapping roller follower with roller follower is here. We provide uh, some clearance so that cam uh, so that cam can rotate about its own axis. It's rotating about the cam axis also, instantaneous cam axis, but we want it should freely move about its own axis. However, there will be a lot of friction. There will be sliding, and we want a pure rolling motion. We know pure rolling will have uh, will have a lesser coefficient of friction 
a much lesser coefficient of friction compared to sliding friction. So, it is always advisable to keep some clearance that can be decided and how much clearance is just sufficient which is not uh, creating any problem of the contact and not creating problem of the sliding. But uh, when we see this kind of mechanism we understand there is a clearance and uh, we are allowing roller to rotate about its own axis and it is also rotating about the cam axis instantaneous cam axis. Then this point comes the loading and unloading is inherent in rolling contact or uh, even though we can try pressure angle we can bring pressure angle to 0, but because of this loading and unloading which happens at the rolling contact that is going to introduce some sort of dynamic load. So, pressure angle making 0 is not going to fulfill the function or it is not going to give us the desirable results. Even though we do all the things we make a good mechanism we go out to the multi links try to make pressure angle as low as possible to 0 as close uh, to the 0 as possible, but it is still in that case because of the rolling contact nature there will be loading and unloading that means there will be a force and there will not be force and it will be generating a dynamic load. To understand that let us take a uh, look or um, just uh, go through this slide we said there is a blue color I am assuming this is the follower and there is a line a straight line assuming the cam radius is a much larger much much larger compared to the follower radius. So, can be approximated as a, a flat surface or we can uh, make effective radius and give complete effective radius to the uh, roller and make uh, play, uh, this uh, cam surface as a infinity uh, radius. Now, in any condition when the this follower is stationary on the cam surface nothing happens if it is not, sub not subjected to the load nothing happens it just remains there. Now, if we apply load there will be some parabolic distribution of the force or parabolic distribution of the uh, pressure generated at uh, point contact or line contact. I am assuming the line assuming that the uh, follower has a some finer length. So, the line contact applying a force line contact will be turning out to be elliptical contact or rectangular contact and pressure will be maximum at the center minimum at the edges of that contact. So, it will not be stationary. Now, if uh, of okay, so course, this, this uh, stress which is generated or the pressure which is generated in a surface is known as a contact stresses or Herzian stresses. Herzian was the first person who could uh, estimate this kind of stresses that is what uh, his formulation which we generally use under dry condition when the, there is no lubrication and assuming the coefficient of friction is 0. We can utilize uh, his expression directly he gave expression for the slender versus uh, slender contact and uh, we can find out what will be the contact patch and how pressure will vary, but that is the ideal situation. And using this formula we can think about the contact stress as a function of radius of follower and radius of cam. This clearly indicates that cam radius need to be larger than follower if there is a negative sign. If there is a positive sign then any, any combination is fine, but generally we use a positive sign if the both the surfaces are convex. We use a negative sign when the one surface is concave and other surface is convex. In our mechanism both the surfaces are working we have a convex contact and we have concave contact. How that is going to be described in a following slide. But what is interesting point which we can gain from this is that as the radius is increasing contact stresses will go down will reduce. Similarly, if the cam radius is increasing and if it is a convex then we can say again um, contact stresses will be reduced. However, if there is a concave and convex combination then overall combination will be having lesser results or we can say that convex and concave uh, interface will induce a lesser contact stresses compared to convex and convex, convex shape. That is why we need to always think over 
do we really going uh, we recommend a convex convex or convex concave interface. And as I mentioned uh, that in our uh, case study or cam follower study both the combinations are there. Now, to find out whether really a uh, um, dynamic load is inherent uh, this slide um, this picture exemplify that says that now load is applied and we know that follower is going to rotate about this axis it is slightly away because of the pressure profile even though it is not coming very near to that this surface will be experiencing some stresses that is why I shown with the low magnitude stress. I am just showing with a line the some magnitude we are not saying this is absolute it is just a comparative purpose some magnitude is here. Now, if it rotates slightly towards the line then this magnitude is going to increase that means initially it was point was like here now it is come somewhere here the pressure contact pressure will increase that will increase the contact stresses. And if it is a continuum, the direct load or we say that point of contact or line of contact directly comes on top of this point, then stress will be maximum. As it is continuously rotating, it will move away from the point, the stress will reduce. Again, it will move away from the point, further stresses will reduce, and finally, it will come to 0. So, just because of the rolling action same point is subjected to the x unit of stress, phi x unit of x stress and tan unit uh, tan x unit of stress. And again as a roller passes that point is coming back to from tan x to phi x and from phi x to 1 x and 1 x to 0 x. So, whatever we do rolling contact are going to give us dynamic load is going there and this kind of interface is always going to give us variation in stress. Maybe from 0 to maximum compressive stress and that is going to introduce some sort of shear force in the surface or some surface. Now, what uh, in the last uh, slide we mentioned about convex and concave interaction and I have a dock in a cam follower magnifier and dock in this you can say this portion in contact with the roller uh, roller follower is going to give us a convex convex shape this is a convex shape and this is a convex shape. So, interaction is a convex convex as there is a some clearance it moves from here this point to this point this convex shape will come in contact with the concave shape that is shown out here this is a convex this is a concave. So, a one cam roller uh, a cam roller follower is generating convex convex as well as convex concave in one complete rotation we can uh, sh shape or we can uh, find out the radius of uh, cam you say initially this is the convex shape and after that as a this radius is going to act. So, this will be concave shape radius we can model cam follower like that An interesting thing is that this has a number of points we know cam is continuous phenomena, but to analyze it we need to divide a number of points. So, that we can find out the load we can find out the radius as those points those divisions and get the results. In the uh, for convenience we have divided in 25 division. So, we are able to find out what are the 25 loads on discrete point and what are the geometry parameter is the radius of uh, cam on this. And if I do a numbering proper numbering what we can say convex uh, uh, shape occurs or con uh, convex uh, convex contact occurs from point 8 to 18. So, this is a point 8 9 10 11 12 up to 18 if I keep a follower on top of that from 8 to 18 this is a convex convex shape interface. From point 1 to 7 the starting point he suppose is here 1 to 7 that is a concave shape uh, similarly uh, 19 to 25 this is a convex shape uh, concave convex concave uh, interface and uh, interesting thing is that from 7 to 8 it goes through transition similarly 8 to 19 goes through the transition and this transition is going to introduce sliding it is going to lose uh, rolling motion 
and most of the sliding will be getting introduced because of the this conversion uh, transformation from convex convex to concave convex concave. And we say this uh, 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 transfer which is introducing sliding and that sliding is reducing the cam life. So, we should work on this can we reduce the sliding if it is possible that will give us good results. So, question comes uh, we have quoted that sliding is going to reduce the life then how sliding reduces the life. Again the same figure is shown which uh, shown a previous uh, couple of uh, slide uh, previous to this says that there is a yellow block subject to reversible load explanation was given why the load is dynamic. And then blue block is experiencing some shear stress which is a determinantal or is it is creating some problem it is going to generate a some sort of cracks it is going to generate a some sort of voids in a surface but not immediately maybe after number of cycles right. Now, if there is a sliding introduced then what will happen we need to have a some sort of uh, friction force to push it because uh, this force will be much larger than um, a rolling friction force. So, we are introducing additional force over here in the tangential direction and that tangential force is going to increase the tau max value. That is, I says that it is not only increasing the magnitude, but it is shifting also. You can see here the maximum value is over here. The maximum value has increased and is going closer to the surface. If it is going closer to the surface, then removing a piece of uh, this blue block will be easier. So, it is doing both the things. First, it is giving high stress and it gives a very close uh, high stress to the surface or near to the surface which will reduce the life in two fold or in the two ways. If I, if I assume total pitting life is enough number of cycles are enough when there was no crack non cracking life that is n 0 crack initiated and after that there is a propagation crack is moving from subsurface to surface n p. Now, if the shear stress magnitude is increased we know very well this n 0 will come down the reduction in n 0. Further if this uh, maximum value is uh, shifted towards a crack uh, towards a surface that means, uh, crack is generated very near to surface immediate pit will be there that means, it is also going to reduce n p or we say that when uh, sliding is coming into picture it is reducing n 0 it is reducing n p. So, overall life is getting reduced to demonstrate that I will just uh, take again uh, maybe some uh, some section of this uh, blue block we say there is no crack after n 0 cycle there is some crack generated over here we can find out and after n f cycles we are saying that this n f cycles are after n 0 that means, once it reaches to n 0 counter again it starts 1 2 n f it is not n f is not sorry uh, in this case uh, n uh, uh, counter starts and 1 to n p comes and this will be a summation yeah it will be n p plus n 0 this counter is not starting here it is uh, starting from 0 uh, from the first cycle itself if it is n p then we can say that uh, after n 0 we are coming going to again restart the counter from 1 and that is from 1 to n p this kind of failure will occur or if summation comes n 0 plus n p we can say after n f cycles first bit is going to generate it. When the first bit is generated then there is a compromise on the surface so, rough surface comes there will be a some sort of jumping mechanism or jumping phenomena will occur that is going to create more uh, disturbance. Uh, in smooth flow and that is going to generate uh, further more number of uh, impact uh, more number of cracks because of the impacting. Now, if I go ahead with um, uh, Hudson theory uh, contact stress uh, theory what we can get uh, instead of 25 I have used a few divisions 
so that it can be accommodated in one slide. And we have figured out uh, cam contact radius everywhere, follower contact radius is always constant, follower radius is not changing. We are assuming that wear happens uh, on the uh, follower surface is negligible compared to the follower radius. And the normal load which is coming on the surface has been uh, estimated based on the force geometry we can find out what will be the maximum compressive stress, maximum uh, compressive stresses which are estimated using Hertzian theory. We find that uh, stresses are increasing from first decreasing then increasing it reaches to maximum value over here uh, 453 mega Pascal and again it reduces it reaches to around 270 roughly 473 mega Pascal. So, we know very well the load was higher similarly the stresses are higher it is coming roughly 473 mega Pascal. Again uh, after that it reduces and reaches to the minimum value which we have estimated uh, at a 0 degree in the same 0 and 360 degree we know they will match. This is uh, one of the validation points we can say the 0 and the 360 should give the same results whatever way may we uh, get the results it uh, should complete one cycle. Now as I mentioned earlier the compressive stress will not initiate fatigue process but shear stresses which are associated with the compressive stresses causes the crack formation and once the crack is formed after the repetitive loading will load unload it and close the crack open the crack close the crack open the crack and it will not slowly slowly and finally the fracture will occur or finally a pit formation will occur and uh, if the sliding is introduced pit formation will be much earlier. So, what I am trying to conclude from this slide, the Hertzian theory is not sufficient to give explanation for the pitting wear. First thing we need to find out what are the associated shear stresses which are generated at the subsurface or the at the sub, um, within the surface. In addition to that uh, if the sliding is introduced how the shear stress is going to move up, how is going uh, shifting to other surface as well as uh, going uh, increasing in magnitude also. For that purpose we require a 3D stress analysis. We say that when rolling and sliding both are present stresses due to normal and tangential loading need to be accounted. So, it is not, uh, load is not only the compressive load and uh, uh, compressive load because of the imported from the cam surface, but load also will be there because of the friction. So, stress value can be calculated something like that we assume that cam and follower are x and z plane this x axis and z axis and perpendicular that of the length of the follower is along the y direction. In that case the stresses can be calculated the stresses due to normal force the stresses due to tangential force that is a frictional force. Similarly, uh, sigma z stress or normal stress in uh, z direction will be force due to the normal force in z direction and uh, compressive stresses due to the tangential force. Why there is no load as such applied, but because of the connectivity because of the molecules are interconnected and there will be a Poison ratio, finite poison ratio is a generally 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Some stresses will also induce in y direction, it will not be without uh, stresses. And finally, comes the shear stress, we are talking about the shear stress only at the x z, we can um, because the stresses are all over, but this will be the maximum which we are trying to find out what it will be the maximum value of this. Now, in this case if I whatever the results which are going to show in that case it has been assumed the coefficient of friction is 0.2 or uh, we say that whatever the normal force we are applying it is getting multiplied with a 0.2 or overall force is 1.2 times of the normal force, but direction is not different. This is uh, along the z direction this will be along the x direction. So, a simple 1.2 times calculation may not give all the results we will be taking a vector uh, uh, 
uh, assuming the directions and uh, we will calculate force according to the different axis. If I do the overall analysis and um, here the few results are presented, you say that at the cam angle only few uh, degree we have a few, few results are presented so that it can be accommodated on slide easily. Contact radius has been repeated uh, which was shown also in the previous slides. Normal force is fine the same force which was uh, shown earlier, but you can see the contact stresses. Initially it was roughly 280, now it is uh, coming around 344, it is reaching to the 574 maximum. In previous slide we have shown the maximum value as a 471 mega Pascal, while well, uh, accounting this uh, yeah, 473 mega Pascal. Now accounting this uh, forces what we are getting roughly 574 around 101 mega Pascal is additional around 20 percent stresses are increasing because of the force because of the sliding, because of the question of friction 0.2 which will be accounted. Now we do not know exactly what will be a question of friction. Will it be 0.1, will it be 0.2, will it be 0.3, will it be 0.4 and when the gross sliding is happening what can the lubricant has been utilized here. If we use a two lubricants wherever the sliding happens we use a thick lubricant or uh, either thick lubricant or use a solid lubricants then it may give a better results. It will reduce coefficient of friction to roughly 0.2. If we do not use some um, uh, solid lubricant there and we use only liquid lubricant the way the whole interface is getting lubricated then quite possible coefficient of friction will localize increase that uh, from when we are shifting from convex to concave contact or from concave to the convex contact coefficient of friction suddenly will increase because this kind of cam followers are generally supplied with a grease and which is uh, having a low NLGI grade um, which can be easily pumped. If uh, it will be easily pumped by using an LGI grade 1 and 2, then it will not be very effective to keep the lubricant layer at that interface. So, either it should be mixed with some sort of molybdenum disulfide or solid lubricant and they get the good results. Apart from that, now with this slide also shows only the maximum normal stress, it does not show the tangential stress, it does not show the shear stress. And um, in from previous slide we mentioned clearly that we should give more emphasis on the shear stress, we should not give more emphasis on normal stress. The question comes, do we have experimental data available with us? If experimental data are available with the shear stresses then we can compare, we can find out the shear stress yes and then we compare it with the material strength. Fundamental rule says that if yield strength is some uh, 500 mega Pascal shear strength will be around 250 mega Pascal or 50 percent of that, but it appears from uh, this kind of uh, surface fatigue phenomena that stress is not very useful many times it gives uh, wrong results. So, people have done extensive studies only on uh, normalized um, uh, normal forces introducing along with the some sort of sliding which gives a better results. Uh, and this phenomenon is common in a cam follower, uh, cam follower mechanism in rolling bearings and uh, gears. So, that is why the results are available with us uh, just only the normal force and normal force with the sliding or we say that normal force with the pure rolling and normal force with the sliding. We can utilize those data using the curve education to get some results. Again it may not give 100 percent results, but it gives the comparative results to us. So, what I was talking on uh, the some material data are available, uh, these are the cam materials, mostly they use a grey cast iron or they use a nodular cast iron with the different hardness uh, domains. They are, it is showing uh, this table it has a uh, 4 columns, K is a constant, S is uh, surface compressive strength, particularly is uh, uh, number of cycles as also mentioned that is say the 10 is to 8 cycles. So, this is strength for the 10 is to 8 cycle is more like a endurance a strength of uh, metals particularly in rolling uh, in a fatigue phenomena. In this case the same thing, but uh, endurance instead of talking about endurance we shall talk about the only the surface compressive strength 
because it will continuously vary it will continuously decrease with the number of cycles. If I increase the number of cycle 10 is to 9 I am sure that uh, this 49000 will reduce to roughly around 40000 or lesser than that. Similarly, there are two other constant lambda and zeta how these three parameters are connected is something like a zeta minus 10 the log 10 n is the number of cycles particularly can be given in the 10 is to 8 cycle 10 is to 6 cycle and there is a lambda. So, there is a relation or Kaufert relation given to us in other word if we want to increase the life we will be able to find out uh, what is the value of k which is required. If I say I want a cam life, cam life to be 10 is to 10 cycles now and after that we need to choose proper k proper zeta proper lambda. So, iterative scheme can be used to find out which result uh, which material will give me appropriate results. Another is uh, uh, of course, this the table shows uh, when the we are introducing 9 percent sliding with the rolling uh, we say the 9 percent energy is getting wasted in sliding it is not imparting relative uh, it is not imparting the rolling motion. We can see clearly here that whenever there is a 9 percent sliding strength is reduced from 49000 it has reduced to 47000 from uh, 1 like 2000 it is reduced to, sorry from 1 like 2000 yeah, it has reduced to 94000 right. Similarly, this uh, is reduced with the addition of uh, sliding whenever there is a sliding strength or surface strength is reduced. There is a the correlation also available within strength and um, uh, k parameter we say if shear strength 10 to 8 cycle has been introduced over here we will be getting some value of k. Of course, E prime here it says effective Young's modulus and we are talking about the two materials material 1 has a poison ratio nu 1 and uh, Young's modulus E 1 for material 2 is a nu 2 and E 2. When we use 10 is to uh, this shear uh, the surface strength for 10 is to 8 cycles we will get a k value over here and same k, k value will come over here. So, that means this kind of two relation can be utilized to find out what will be the estimated life of camp follower mechanism. Now, if I find out uh, maximum normal principal stress which we determine in previous slide something like this if we are able to find out what is the maximum normal uh, principal stress that stress can be utilized in this to find out what will be the value of k for a material. If I know the gray cast iron has been utilized for our purpose for the our cam material is gray cast iron I can find out or I can estimate maximum normal principal stress from that we can find out value of k once the k value is known and for material zeta and lambda are known I can find out what will be the life and in number of cycles and if we know the rotational speed of that cam follower mechanism and uh, how many hours it is operating in a day we can find out what will be life in number of days ok. This will be only relative it will not be absolute if you want to find out that to which material is going to give you the better results and how much better like will be 50 percent uh, uh, better results or 100 percent or more than that then we can choose proper material based on that. Now, utilizing those uh, parameters we can uh, say um, when we are thinking a cam follower is running at the 60 rpm and uh, for uh, we can find out what will be life for the gray cast iron with a C 20 which has a lower hardness. It appears that this kind of a mechanism or this kind of material will show very low life it shows only the 16.5 days much lower life in a real sense if it is the sliding is reduced by applying um, um, proper lubricant obviously instead of 9 percent sliding there is only 1 percent sliding or 2 percent sliding then this life will increase. Now, if I change from this gray cast iron to this gray cast iron which has um, a solid lubricant phosphate coated the phosphate itself is uh, acting as a solid lubricant layer that means uh, uh, sliding obviously that uh, question of friction will reduce substantially. In that case we are able to find the very high life it comes roughly the 
3700 days, which is substantially high life almost 10 years now. So, that, that is a good. However, when we are increasing the speed from 60 rpm to 65 rpm, we are able to find that that is a because a rotation is increasing, that is also increasing the sliding, that is reducing the life from 16.5 days to the 11.8 days. The life substantial uh, life is reduced, if we can say that is around 20.28.5 percent life is reduced. What we are gaining a profit in a productivity is uh, hardly 5 percent from uh, 60 to 65 uh, rpm is a 5 uh, uh, rpm is increased. So, we are not getting even the 5 percent uh, profit, but loss in the life is almost 28.5 percent is substantially high that means, we will never recommend the increasing uh, cam follower speed uh, from uh, 60 rpm to 65 rpm may be giving slight advantage on the productivity point of view, but life is uh, compromised uh, severely or loss is much on the higher side. Coming to the second material, uh, we can say that uh, it has a more effect if the speed is increasing from this uh, 3700 days to um, uh, speed is increased from 60 to 65 rpm, number of days uh, usual life is reduced. Uh, roughly is coming 2300 or much lesser than um, 50 percent and uh, overall uh, reduction in uh, life is coming around 36.3 percent. Similarly, we use a uh, higher uh, carbon uh, uh, higher percentage in this case, when you use a uh, higher hardness also of course, we are removing the phosphate coating self uh, lubricated coating, we can say that life is reduced in this case. Similarly, for all other material, but one interesting thing is the nodular cast iron, which has a written applicability or a much better uh, uh, sliding performance is uh, showing very high life. Of course, again this will be hypothetical, like I can say that that is not um, um, that is not going to give a good solution, quite possible it can avoid the pitting failure, but some other mechanism will come and uh, fail uh, this component. Maybe pitting failure can be avoided, but a mild uh, wear a removal of the real uh, layer cannot be or the dynamic process if the micron level particles have been removed the surface clearance will continuously increase. If the clearance is continuously increase the impact loading will continuously increase and that may cause a more problem. So, this will be totally hypothetical and we are saying that in this case we are just considering only pitting failure, we are not assuming any other kind of failure, we are not talking about the abrasive failure, we are not talking about the adhesive failure or we are not talking, talking about change in dimension. If there is a change in dimension increase in clearance, this life also will be reduced. It is uh, in the wear cannot uh, be that high, cannot provide that high life. So, in uh, totally what we say that we this kind of a mechanism when we do a wear analysis, we can compare the materials, we can find out what kind of load condition is giving the going to give us good solution. Do we need to reduce the load magnitude, do we uh, change uh, uh, variation in the load, if yes whether that is going to be advantageous to us or not. If we find now even whatever we do uh, cannot change the dynamic load because of the rolling contact uh, uh, which has inherent load dynamic load. Uh, uh, generation, then uh, there is no point to change the design at that point. However, but uh, we can say we can provide a better lubricant, we can reduce the coefficient of friction. I have seen uh, uh, industry are applying now with a two do, uh, lubricant, they use uh, high energy grade uh, uh, grease every 10 now uh, after every 10 hours they re lubricate the surface where the maximum pitting is uh, occurring and uh, they use uh, additional grease just for the circulation purpose. So, that can take away the particles and uh, uh, lubricate the those surfaces which uh, where the severe condition is not been imposed. So, those things are there we will uh, end with this slide uh, on the KVM uh, wear analysis or uh, in addition to that we are uh, finishing the module 3 which is a uh, wear module. We will be starting uh, next lecture onward the fourth module that is a lubrication mechanisms and lubricant, what kind of lubricants are useful for us or for the machines which we are uh, planning to design or we are uh, trying to maintain that mechanism and with this uh, I thank you for your attention.